John Playford. Born in Norwich in 1623, he moved to London and became a bookseller, publisher and occasional composer. To us today, John Playford is probably best known for publishing The English Dancing Master in 1651. The English Dancing Master contains music for 105 dances, as well as the instructions on how to dance them. Between 1651 and 1728, several editions of The Dancing Master were published, first by John Playford and then by his successors. The melodies in The Dancing Master weren't composed by Playford, Rather, he collected together a whole load of already existing and popular tunes. With each new edition, new tunes were added, and ones that had fallen out of favour were dumped. That means you could think of The Dancing Master as some sort of Baroque, now that's what I call music. The dances in this book kind of have their origin in a bit of rebellion. Dancing in England at this time was very strict, formal and complicated, and it was definitely the reserve of the wealthy who had the time and money to invest in regular dance lessons. And then at the other end of the scale, we have peasants. Working people who, at the end of their working week, just wanted to go and dance for fun. They didn't have the time, and probably not the desire, to learn all of these strict, formal, fussy, show-offy steps. They just wanted something simple and basic that they didn't have to bother learning. They could just dance. The thing is, a lot of those dances were so simple that people actually got bored of them. And that's where the dancing masters like Playford rose up with an answer. The dances given in The Dancing Master provide something more interesting than the rustic working folk dances, whilst also managing to be a bit of a rebellion against the stagnant high society stuff. Great. Why am I waffling on about all of this? Well, all of the melodies in The Dancing Master are single line, the vast majority of which fall rather beautifully into the range of the recorder. The thing is, the first edition of The English Dancing Master alone contained 105 melodies, and then there are all of the other editions adding yet more dances each time. So where on earth do you start? I have spent the last three weeks or so working my way through the first volume of Playford, trying to choose just three pieces that I think would make a good starting point. I wanted the three pieces I chose to be approachable by newer recorder players such as myself, but also I just wanted them to be good tunes that anybody would want to play. Hopefully. Anyway, enough talking, let's have a look at my personal three picks for getting into Playford. To furnish yourself with the music from The Dancing Master, you can of course buy physical printed copies, or you could take a look at this website, which I recently discovered, and which has set me off on this whole Playford thing, and get it all for free. Playforddances.com is a fabulous, comprehensive, and did I mention free, collection, catalogue and index of every single dance published in every single volume of The Dancing Master. You can easily spend many hours surfing your way through the lists to find something you might like to play. The music's given in modern notation as well as an image of the original text, and the instructions for the dancing are all there too, if you fancy, as well as information about which editions the piece originally appeared in. This really is a fantastic resource, and I've linked to it in the description below. So let's ease ourselves gently into Playford with my first pick. We're in C major, and there is nothing scary going on here at all. It is a really lovely melody though, called If All the World Were Paper. There we go, nice and simple but definitely catchy. In fact, you may well recognise this melody. It's actually a very old nursery rhyme, probably from around 1620, and we still use it today. Now, one of the things that I really like about this dance music in Playford is that it is often formed up of little chunks that you repeat over and over again to form the entire dance. If All the World Were Paper, for example, is only eight bars long. I played it through twice, but actually to form the entire dance, you would play it through 12 times. But of course, if, like me, you're not actually going to be doing the dancing, you can play it through as many or as few times as you like. 
And just because the piece of music starts out simple doesn't mean it has to stay that way. You could go mad writing divisions and adding ornaments until the cows come home. There's just something I love about these short pieces of music that contain these dynamite melodies. You can do what you like with them. But today, let's keep it simple and move on to my choice number two. Uh, I love this one. I think it has to be my favourite out of the three I've chosen. It's in D minor. I love anything with a minor edge to it and it is called Drive the Cold Winter Away. Drive the Cold Winter Away was in existence for at least a good 50 years before Mr Playford got his hands on it. It was originally an English Christmas carol. Now I said I liked this piece because of the slightly sombre edge that the minor key brings to it, but the carol was originally a celebration of all of the festive things you might have got up to over the Christmas period. Or that the Elizabethans might have got up to, anyway. If you give it a Google, you can read the lyrics. I really enjoyed reading them. And clearly I am not alone because a wide variety of musical artists have recorded Drive the Cold Winter Away over the years. And that's something I tried to take into account when I was choosing these three pieces. I wanted to make sure that there were plenty of recordings available so that you can have a listen and try to decide how you might like to play the piece. Anyway, let's move on to my third and final choice. Piece number three is Grimstock and it is one for any Pride and Prejudice fans out there. Green went off halfway through recording that. Turns out I can remember it. At last I memorised something. Anyway, I said that one was one for Pride and Prejudice fans because you might remember it from the 1995 BBC TV adaptation of Pride and Prejudice. It was very popular. There is a little bit more going on in Grimstock than there is in either of my first two choices. There's some higher notes, it's a bit more up-tempo. But of course you can play it as slowly or as quickly as you like and you can add as many twiddly widdly bits as you like or don't. The choice is yours. So they were my three picks for getting into Playford. There are hundreds more tunes to choose from. Some of them, a lot of them, are very simple and approachable and easy to get started with. Some of them are more rhythmically complex. A lot of them would be played very quickly for a dance. So there is something in The Dancing Master, whether you're a newer player or a more experienced player, there is a lot of material to get through. I say get through, it's very enjoyable. I hope you've enjoyed this whistle-stop guide for getting started with Playford. I found it so difficult to choose just three pieces to play, there were loads more I would have liked to have showcased, but this video would have gone on forever, so I had to restrain myself. If you do want more Playford though, do go and check out that website I mentioned earlier. I've linked it in the description below and also in the description you will find links that will take you directly to the music for the three pieces I've played, which is probably going to be easier than trying to screenshot them from my video. And if you're not new to Playford and you're an old hand at working your way through The Dancing Master, then do let us know your Playford favourites in the comments. If for some reason you have enjoyed this spectacularly nerdy video, then please do give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. I make a video every week, usually about the recorder, but often about other instruments too, and I would love to see you again next time. Thanks so much for watching, bye!